Hello, and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to show you some different FPS tricks that we are doing in Dishonored uh, as of April 2023. All of the ones you will need for an any percent uh, world record-ish route. Uh, they save different amounts of time. Some of them will be more important than others. And I'll show you both how much time each of them saves as well as a run through at the end with me doing the trick next to me not doing the trick. I have an input display in the bottom left that shows off all my inputs when I'm moving around. The bottom bar on that input display shows off my FPS binds. So if I press this button, I go to 250 frames per second. If I press this one, I go to 100. 5 FPS, 2 FPS, and yeah. So you can see me press those buttons in the bottom left, and you can see my frame rate in the top right and the, with the green text. That should be everything you need to know before we get into it, so I'm going to start right away. So this first one is pretty minor. Uh, for the sewer climb right here, where you're getting into this position, turning left and going up here, this trick is pretty hard if you're doing it at 250 frames per second and can be pretty inconsistent. So by lowering to at least 100 frames per second, which is what I do, you can also go even lower for more consistency, the trick becomes a lot easier. So just lower your frame rate before doing the setup and it should be a lot easier. That allows you to get up real nice. So next up is Seeker Samble which is Seeker's setup for the trick Sambal. Uh, I already covered Sambal in the Any% percent guide that I posted a few years ago, and that setup that I used there is a little bit outdated, and so I'm just gonna recover it here. Uh, Seeker's setup uh, starts by blinking to the bottom right corner of this triangle. So you can see like there's a triangle here on the ground. Um, by blinking to the bottom right here, and then turning towards Samuel immediately like this, Hey, Corvo. You get over to him about the time when he's putting away his cigarette. And the way this trick works is by interacting with Samuel on the same frame that he puts away his cigarette. So, the way this is done is by blinking to that part of the corner, running over to him, lowering your frame rate right as you stop moving, and then interacting with him immediately after lowering your frame rate. So, in the Any% percent Guide, uh, the way I described interacting with them is that you wanted to scroll. That is not necessary. You can just hold your Interact button, which is by default F. Um, so you can just run over to them and hold F after lowering your frame rate, is what I'm saying. So you click here, run over, lower your frame rate, and then go right back up. That should bring up this prompt right away, which means you've done the trick correctly. Once again, Blink there, run over, and then I uh, get my frame rate up again right away after doing the uh, F prompt. You don't actually have to do that if you find that to be too many uh, button presses right after each other. You can blink over, do that, and then like later on you can put your frame rate back up, okay, let's go. which makes it a little bit easier in terms of buttons, but it does make it a little bit slower. So. Look there, run over, and that's basically the entire okay, setup. If you see him put away his cigarette before cool. you like um, interact with him, then you were too late. It's a little bit harder to tell whether or not you were too early. There's no real way to tell that. Sometimes Samuel will start talking before uh, he's put away the cigarette, just saying, hey Corvo, or whatever, something like that. So it's hard to tell if you're too early. If you're too late, you can see that because he has already put away his cigarette when you're pre pressing interact. From the way I hear it, Campbell lived a pretty posh okay, life. Let's go. Maybe it's not my place to say. Men of the faith shouldn't live like barons. Are you ready to go? Okay, let's go. So now I'm going to show you Sambalong, which is the 
biggest uh, fiesta except for Sambel. Uh, Samalov is a bit different from Sambel. It works completely differently. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do it first once and then explain the setup in more detail. So I start by blinking down here. And then right here in front of me, there is a cutscene activation box. So as soon as I walk into this cutscene, the cutscene will start and Samuel will speak for a while before he teleports me, like, or before the cutscene teleports me over here. And by quick saving while I'm entering this cutscene on a specific frame, I can skip that entire part of him talking to me uh, before the cutscene starts. So I'm just gonna do it once to show you how it looks. And you see it skips uh, right away uh, to this part of the cutscene. So the way we do this, uh, I'm going to show you my setup. Uh, you want to start by going and pushing yourself up against this corner right here, like just ish there, and then aiming for the bottom of the splotch in the background. I'm now going to cheat and pause the NPCs in the background here so that they won't annoy me. They are now frozen in place. So you start by blinking to the splotch like I showed you. Go over and pick him up, get him on your shoulder, get into position here, aim for the splotch. So you start by blinking down here, and then once you're down here, you want to aim for this corner right here uh, with your blink. So like aim there. And then aim above this, this like pillar that's sticking out of the water. This will put you really close to entering the cutscene without actually entering you into it. And will then allow you to be ready to start the uh, trick. So the next thing to do here is to lower your frame rate. And then it's literally just press forwards and then quick save right after you press forwards. So I'm holding shift, aka sprint and then WR. Royal position. So you can see um, it's a little bit of a timing difference between pressing W and R. That's all just learning how the setup works. And if you're slightly further away from the cutscene, it's going to be slightly different. And it's it's all based on specifically like exactly where you're standing when doing the setup. But it's a thing you can get a really good feel for once you've done it a few times. Uh, so yeah, you just blink down here, aim for that corner, aim here, and then wait for the auto save, quick save to happen. A couple of things about troubleshooting this trick is that um, this trick, if you do the quick save too early, you will get a different, like, weird version of this where you are stuck in the cutscene when you load your auto save, but you will uh, not skip the parts we are trying to skip here. So I blink over here, right? And I'm now just going to cut to one attempt where I actually get the bad one. Royal positions. Royal positions. Yeah, this right here, this right here. This is how it looks if you uh, quick save too Royal early after entering the cutscene. So if you make your quick save and then you load it and then you see that you're stuck in this version, then you quick save too early. If you quick save too late, no autosave will be created at all, and so it's very easy to tell whether or not you did this trick correctly by just quick saving and or by loading the quick save you created and seeing what happens with it. So once again, the correct setup for this is pick up, uh, pick up Sokolov. Aim for the splotch, blink down here. Aim for the corner, blink down here. Blink above the pipe. A pole that's sticking out, W then R, load the quick save, and that skips all the six seconds of dialogue beforehand. I now turn, I now my, I turn hope. my hope. The next up is uh, a oh trick my. called Samur. This works the same way as Samulov, except for the fact that to initiate this cutscene, we have to interact with Samuel. 
So instead of walking into a cutscene and then quick saving, we're going to interact with Samuel and then quick save. So you start here by looking at Samuel, then you lower your frame rate, then you press your interact button, and then quickly afterwards you quick save. So it's very quickly afterwards. Uh, I have my quick save on R, and so for me, I can by just pressing F and shifting my button, uh, finger over to R, I can get the trick. Is it all done? Like that. That was with one button. Thanks to you, Corvo. Uh, you ideally also want to uh, put your uh, frame rate back up before you load the quick save to save a little bit of time uh, afterwards. Oh my. So yeah, you want to look at Samuel, lower your frame rate, then press F, then uh, quick save. You're ready to back put your frame rate back up and then load the save. That gets you here. This again has the same thing where if you make the quick save too quickly after interacting with the Sam, you can get uh, a bad one where you get stuck, much like I showed off in the Sam a lot. Is it all done? Is it all done? Yeah, like this, where you still you get the little bit of a uh, interaction where it, all done? it says, is it all You're done? Ready? Is it all done? You ready to this trick, as you can see from the fact that the fade out takes almost no time at all, saves very, very little time. This trick is not something you should go for until you are literally going for like a top five time in the game. It saves less than a second, if I remember correctly. It saves very, very little. Uh, not recommended to go for unless you are have a really competitive time already. Is it all done? Is it all done? You're ready to go back Thanks to the to Hound you, Pits? Corvo. All right, let's Thanks go. Thanks to you, Corvo. All right, let's go. So next up is a trick called 2 FPS Flooded, where you start by clipping through this door and Flooded like normally right at the end. Um, then you want to enter this water stream in a specific way. In general, in Dishonored, water streams uh, will move you faster your, the lower your frame rate is. And so by going to 5 FPS like I did there, I get to the end of this water stream really quickly. And if you go so low that you're at 2 frames per second, uh, then the game gets real confused and gives you a truly huge amount of uh, speed. Which can bring you all the way over here, which, uh, if I'm, as I might be able to show off here, is right at the end of the level. So, what I did there is not very optimal. Uh, we have a setup here for how you want to move to um, get all the way to the end, right by the door, as quickly as possible. So, you clip through the door, right? Then you run over here, and while you're running, you want to line yourself up so you're aiming at this black line in the background. This one right here. And then... You want to, as late as possible, double jump forwards. And then while you're in the air looking at the line, you want to look ish there. How far you turn is not that important. Like, as long as you don't overturn, you're kind of fine. You want to just turn a little bit so that you're looking left. I try to aim, like, so that after I'm, I've left the ground, I aim between these two, like, things that are sticking out. Like, between these two things. So you run over here, double jump, and look there-ish, and you should be fine. Then, the timing for when you want to lower your frame rate in the water is pretty specific. If you do it wrong, like, if I do it, if I lower my frame rate too early here, the trick just sends me, like, completely the wrong place. I get sent, like, out of bounds to a place where there's no real way to get back uh, quickly, losing a lot of time. Uh, so the timing here is pretty precise. This trick just saves like four seconds in general, so probably not worth doing for most people. But it is a cool trick to play around with because it sends you flying. It's really cool. So yeah, you want to lower your frame rate as soon as you like hear yourself hit the water. So it's basically at the same time as you're hitting the water. So it's basically as soon as you hit the water, you want to lower your frame rate. So jump, turn around, lower frame rate when I hit the water, then blink right away afterwards. And there you saw an issue with this trick. I'm right now not on the best hardware uh, and 
the last part of this trick it requires you to do a wall hug hitting a sticky wall in this game breaks your fall in such a way that you don't take fall damage um and that requires you to have a high frame rate so sometimes this trick just does not work if you aren't on like amazing next generation hardware so you want to jump here turn left lower your frame rate and then blink immediately and then blink one more time into a wall so the way i'm trying to do it here is pretty tricky because i'm not giving myself a lot of wall to bump into but if you blink like above this here like here ish you should be safe like most of the time 